Welcome back to the show, everybody. Check out this headline. You think the crypto winter is a problem? How about an 80 trillion blind spot? That's what the Bank of International Settlements is talking about. Somebody roll that beautiful intro. Digital Perspectives with Brad Kimes. Come on in. Welcome back to the show, everybody. You can follow me on TikTok, YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook for exclusive content. Right now, we are looking at $883 billion market cap for cryptocurrency, ladies and gentlemen. And I tell you, from a time of three plus trillion to where we are now, it seems like this is a suppression that's happening on the market with the lack of clarity, but it's not the only thing we're gonna talk about today. And before we get started, I want everybody to know, I am a perma bull, a permanent bullish guy on this space and the technologies that I believe have the ability to serve the world going further in the fourth industrial revolution, internet of value. I just want to be clear about that because some of the things we're going to talk about today are very uncomfortable as far as information goes. So it is important to try to get as much information as you can. Bitcoin, 16,900. Ethereum, 1251 and change. Market cap for Tether is 65 billion seven, And we see here 38 cents for XRP. Speaking of the uncertainty, we can't know it all. Look, I've started a digital perspective mastermind group, weekly live streams every week, and we go down into particular topics that the group wants to talk about. We have a book and, and it's a whole set of courses on there for you as well. Incredible community. I'm telling you right now, because the market is collapsing, this is the time, this is the place to get the tools that you need whether it's a checklist, how to build a portfolio, all of those things you're looking for, this is the time for you to get empowered. And you can do that in this community because it is really, truly the sense of the word, a community. Click the link underneath the video as a special offer and it will end soon. Join that group. And later today at two o'clock, I'll be speaking at the Global Investor Conference with Linda P. Jones on the panel. If you want to go, you can click that link right there, Global Investor Conference, and join us at 2 to 3 p.m. today. It's going to be an incredible conversation. I wouldn't miss it. And I'm telling you, you don't want to miss it. And by the way, link to private equity, Uphold, Ripple, used to be Coinbase. I mean, you can get so many things there. PolySign is there. You know, there's so many things there that are just incredible opportunities if you're accredited. Click the link to the sponsor underneath the video. Make no mistake about it, John Deaton says, Elizabeth Warren is fraud. She acts as though she's the great bank slayer when in fact she's the great bank protector. All she wants is to create sound bites related to her class warfare agenda. Boom. Well said, John Deaton. Uh-huh. You know, uh, this is all on the post here that uh, Ryan Selka shared about the uh, I feel bad for Silvergate. This should have been a banner year for them as a pillar of the crypto community as rates finally rose above zero for the first time in years. Instead, their collateral damage to massive financial fraud, as we know, is FTX and SPF, and now it becomes a part of Elizabeth Warren's witch hunt. What a shame it is. And I totally agree with everything John Deaton said. You know, it's that whole political posturing on things. And speaking of political posturing, this is the guy who's been on an apology tour. I'd love to not have to talk about this stuff anymore, too. I'm sure some of you are feeling it. But you know what? We have to really know as much as we can as we move through this. And it's not just about the story. It's about who covers it and why also. The new management of bankrupts, uh, bankrupt crypto exchange FTX has hired forensics investigation firm uh, Alex Partners LLP, just for full disclosure. And then I want you to watch this this is a half-ass attempt as CNBC tries to insert Becky Quick to find that journalist backbone in the game and late in the game by pressing Kevin O'Leary and after crowning SBF, the next JP Morgan on CNBC. Take a listen to this. Here's what I don't understand. I, I mean, you're right. Everybody who we thought were savvy investors can look at this and say, we should have seen the signs. We should have known. 
I listened to the interview that Andrew did with him so at did Deal I. Book, and I thought, that guy's a crook and a liar. You listened to it and said you'd invest money with him again if it turns out there's nothing criminally wrong here. What so did you hear that, that I didn't the hear? The context of that is I have been known for decades to invest in entrepreneurs that have had catastrophic outcomes, bad ones, because they learn a lot from their mistakes. It may not fit for Sam Bankman Freed because we don't know the outcome of what's going to occur. Yeah, but I, all I can say is everything he said, oh, I just didn't realize. You didn't realize there was an $8 billion hole. You didn't realize that there yeah, was like exactly. clients' funds this that is, were being swapped over great. there. It's not his fault. Like that, can... that to me is like, man, that guy has bad news. That's not just you had bad luck. He was lying and manipulating. You don't know. That isn't correct. And Kevin O'Leary is not telling the truth. And he knows he's not telling the truth because the bankruptcy filings tell us that it's the truth. He was absolutely lying. And what else tells us the truth? All the requirements that are uh, required, whether it's KYC, AML, bank and secrecy agreements, and other things of that nature, when you're filing a company to do the things that FTX and Alameda Research have done, are absolutely reason why Kevin and his team of investors knew what was going on. I go back to the uh, payment for uh, payment for offer flow, payment for order flow, right? The PFOF that Linda P. Jones spoke about. And I hope we get a chance to talk about this today, because what I see is what she laid out there, which is that FTX was extremely close to monopolizing this entire space one way or another and having the PFOF all go into their pocket where they get a little piece of every single thing that gets bought in this world of crypto that we're in. That's what I see. Now, you know, to go along with that, then we have this guy. Here's more FUD, ladies and gentlemen. The whole thing seems bottomless. It's just a giant con, says Jim Cramer. Take a listen to this. He's talking about Solana, XRP, and Doge. Listen to this. I should check in with Jim Cramer. Uh, Jim, what would you like to talk about this morning? Well, I think we have to distinguish between the notion of what blockchain is. <laughs> no one thinks blockchain is bad. I, I, and what happened here, and I thought you guys did an amazing job. I think Kevin O'Leary is caught up in what I would describe as a suboptimal situation. And <laughs> I think you did your best to get to the bottom of it. But it, the whole thing seems so bottomless that I don't know how to fathom it. Yeah, I, I mean, it's we're, we're all trying to figure out what happened. I think Kevin's right. It's going to be years that we're hearing about this. Once bankruptcy courts get involved, um, it's going to be a very long unwinding. I, I Look, I... I I don't know about Bitcoin. I think that one's different than a lot of the other coins. But I think the marks that came with some of these things are enough to leave you scratching your head. Well, everything you said was true. I mean, at the end, I mean, I, I think that Kevin said that everything you said was true. I mean, the problem is everything everyone says is true about this, except for it's just a giant con. And remember, the con is not uh, it, it, it's not blockchain. Blockchain is great. But we keep conflating blockchain with the con. And I don't know how that can continue. I mean, the, this thing, all these different prices, like we put up XRP and Solana and Dogecoin. Those are all, I believe, cons. Yeah. I mean, why don't we just put up like a bunch of stocks that are valued at the same size? I, so I'm tired of the con. I thought you guys did a terrific job. And I love, but, but I, I love blockchain, but it has nothing to do with what happened. That's like saying, yeah. you know what, I really love the fact that we put up cryptocurrencies. But there's nothing <laughs> to love. Technology is good, but it, it, it's I mean, if we think that the XRP uh, slash USD coin is something that we should be following. Well, I mean, we should be following just we should put up like rent the runway and stitch fix up there. I mean, I, you know, honestly, you know, let's put up those CEOs. on I, too, I, guess. I don't know. <laughs> let's put up Sienna up there. I, I don't know. I mean, I, I just find it's just a random group of things that we put up and that I question that because I'm busy trying to find how to make money for people. <laughs> and then tell him the opposite, like he did Lehman Brothers eight days before it went belly up and he's screaming to everyone to not leave. If there's anything I'm certain of in this world, Jim Cramer is no genius. John Deaton says here, Kramer is calling something XRP a con because he is conflating it with SBF and FTX fraudulent criminal enterprise. Why do you get someone on the, why don't you get someone on that actually knows what he or she is talking about? Eight years ago, the United States, and this was the uh, um, Government Accountability Office, 
that actually knows what they're talking about described XRP as a virtual currency. Guess what? It was described it was described as a con. It was classified as a, it wasn't described as a con. It was classified as a virtual currency and decentralized payment system. The next year, 2015, FinCEN and the DOJ called it a convertible virtual currency, not a con. In 2015, the CFTC implied it was a commodity, not a con. That's what we're talking about here, right? It's just outrageous. In 2019, FSOC, which we talk about here on the channel an awful lot, highlighted XRP not as a con, but a virtual currency along with Bitcoin and Ethereum. Becky, do you recognize any important names? I don't see Kramer's name, but Jay Clayton and the CFTC chairman, etc. they didn't highlight it as a con either. That's what we're talking about here. You know, it's really incredible. Uh, let me let me play this for well actually I, I don't want to play that we're getting long in the video and we still have more to go but that's Jim Cramer explaining when he worked for a fund how he would manipulate the fund to scare retail investors so he could make money off of the backs of retail investors by falsely informing the market it's exactly what he explains in that video don't forget about this going on BRICS India the expansion of BRICS the Memorandum of Understanding between Saudi Arabia and BRICS coalition. This is the pressure from around the world. We may be thinking about the case. We may be thinking about a crypto winner. But I tell you, we better not get so closely focused on just crypto. We better be paying attention to the macro concepts that are happening to the global economy. And it is changing very fast. Very fast. And in fact... Shout out to uh, Coach JV here, put out this quick video about a tipping point for the monetary system. And I think he's absolutely right. There is trouble coming and listen to this. So I'm personally still trying to wrap my head around the news yesterday. I know everybody is focused on FTX collapse, but there was news yesterday that I reported this right here. And there it is, the FX swap debt a $80 trillion blind spot, global regulators says. And shout out to Coach JV again for that. Appreciate you. And uh, this FX swap debt, $80 trillion blind spot from the BIS, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, it gets worse because we're not the only ones talking about this and seeing this. And shout out to Merlin Crypto Future Invest, who's highlighting it as well. He personally believes it would it would lead to a $1,600 plus XRP price. But I want to show you that this is BIS talking about dollar debt and FX swaps and forwards, huge, missing, and growing. $25 trillion, $35 trillion, $17 trillion. And I have a clip here from George Gammon that is going to break down exactly what we're talking about here, ladies and gentlemen exactly what we're talking about here and you're going to want to see it right here take a listen to what he's saying we'll talk it just came out the other day this is for december 2022 and this is on page 76 of 90 dollar debt in fx swaps and forwards huge missing and growing not exactly a title that inspires confidence in the global economy <laughs> FX swaps, forwards, and currency swaps create forward dollar payment obligations. In other words, dollar liabilities, dollar-denominated debt that has to be paid back in the future. And these obligations do not appear on balance sheets and are missing in standard debt statistics. Non-banks outside of the United States owe as much as $25 trillion in such missing debt. And keep in mind, guys, we're not talking about Credit Suisse and Deutsche Bank. We're talking about non-banks outside of the United States. So actual real companies that produce stuff, among other things like pension funds, hedge funds, etc. And this $25 trillion amount is up from $17 trillion in 2016. Non-U.S. banks owe upwards of $35 trillion. Much of this debt is very short term, and the resulting rollover needs to make for dollar funding squeezes. In other words, 
the dollar doing exactly what GameStop did, let's say a year ago, when it went from $10 to whatever, $300 or $400, and then right back down. Policy responses to such squeezes include central bank swap lines. We talk about all the time on this channel. But these are set in a fog. Their words, not mine. With little information about the geographic distribution of the missing debt. With little information about the geographic distribution of the missing debt, which is $25 trillion missing. And we talk about a crypto winner. We talk about the impact of possibly Tether getting subpoenas or worse. Look at the global economy. We're talking about somewhere in the neighborhood of $80 trillion now being admitted to by the BIS. The Bank of International Settlements is the central bank of central banks. And they're calling it a blind spot. Look, I, I'm no economist, but I tell you what, this, and I have said this, and I'm going to say it again today. It gets harder and harder for me to believe that the introduction of XRP with clarity doesn't involve some kind of monetary reset to go with it. Because the CBDC should go right along with it as well. That, to me, is the pieces we're looking at that belong to the board, which is a new monetary reset. That's how I see it. It's not financial advice from me or anyone else. I'm going to leave it right there. I hope you will join us at the Global Investor Conference. We'll see you at 2 p.m. at globalinvestorconference.com. Check it out. Sign up. We'll see you there. Not financial advice from me or anyone else. I'll catch all of you on the next one.